If your Glock is hard to pull with stock internals at seven pounds, this kit is claiming it'll bring you down to three pounds. <laughs> All right, so we are at the workbench today to do this install. So we've got the package from Terran Tactical Innovations. We'll talk about this, but first let's talk about this Glock 19 setup. So it is a Shadow Systems MR918 frame with factory internals. And you can see here, the take up is a little stiff. And the reset is not too bad, but still it's stiff to break the wall again. So we want to clean that up and reduce that. So this Terran Tactical Kit is uh, is claiming that with no gunsmithing, you can get a, a trigger pull of about three to five pounds. It varies based on your configuration that you have, uh, your trigger type and anything else you got going on in here. So three to five pounds are their, what they're saying you can accomplish. Uh, that factory pull is, uh, well, Glock claims it's 5.5 pounds. So I don't have a trigger pull gauge, but I can tell you it's definitely more than five pounds. Um, I've had it pulled at the range before, and it's, it's almost at like seven, seven and a half pounds. So a factory pull is actually not five pounds. Okay. And then we're going to get started with breaking the, the frame down first. All right, so for this frame, I've got uh, three pins, one rear pin here, two pins here I need to take out. So let's just go ahead and do that now. Okay, so the pins are all out. So next we need to remove the trigger and everything out. So we'll remove this block first. So I just use one of my punches here just to get under there, nice and easy. And it comes out pretty loosely. And then my slide release. I put everything in the middle here so I don't lose it. And then we're gonna just pull the whole trigger housing out. So put the frame aside, don't need that for now, just sit it right there. And we're gonna take some parts out of this. Okay, so it looks like we got the spring here that goes in the trigger frame. And we got the connector. These two springs, this is the the uh, firing pin spring, and this is the plunger spring. These will go for the frames, or for the uh, slide, excuse me. So we'll put that over there out of the way. And this will be what we'll install back. The reason why they provide this is so if you're not sure which guns have which internals, uh, you could have this steel uh, one, in, and you can identify it when it's in the rear of your frame. You'll see this sticking through there. Okay, so now we need to break apart this trigger. Pretty simple. We're just going to push it forward like so and lift it out like that and this spring we're going to replace so let's first take the trigger out and we're going to remember our orientation which is this hook right here goes down and it hooks up in so we're going to just flip it upside down and sort of twist it out like that and remove it out so this is how it goes in so now we're going to replace the factory one. I'll put it there with my spare piece I'm not using. With this Terran one, they've made this spring to help with the trigger pull and the reset. So now we've got it right there. We're going to reattach it to the trigger like well, almost got it. These small pieces, you got to take your time and be patient with it, like so, okay? Then this uh, connector here, we're going to be replacing that. This one is thinner, uh, lighter, and it's polished. So this is a factory one. This is the aftermarket. So to do that, you will push through this little gap here where you see that little silver piece. All right, so small screwdriver. I'm going to just push this through. See, it comes out, okay? And then it can only be installed one way, so you can't screw it up. So you just take the new one and line it up to the hole and push it in. And then you reseat your cruciform 
back into that little window there, like so, and your trigger pieces are done. All right, so the slide install, um, you're gonna be installing two springs, one plunger spring and one firing pin spring. The firing pin spring is probably gonna be the hardest part, so we'll see how well we do. But to break this down, you will remove your uh, guide rod and spring, take your barrel out, set those both aside. Ooh, that's dirty, sorry, damage. Um, next, you will remove your back plate by engaging the firing spring or the yeah spring here pushing that down and pushing forward so i push down on this right here and i push forward with my thumb with this and now put my back plate away i've got my channel liner that came out which happens every now and then that's okay but this spring that's on this uh, firing pin will be replaced by this spring it's a little bit lighter and then the plunger which is the easiest thing to install out of all this so the plunger is underneath this right here the plunger springs underneath the plunger funnily enough so you're going to push it down there we go okay so this tiny little spring is the plunger spring you just take it out of the plunger cup. I'm gonna put it with the other stock parts there and take the new one that's a little bit smaller and thinner and I'm gonna put it back where it came from. So line it up, push the plunger back in, put the ejector back in its place, verify everything's nice and snug. We're done with that. Okay, so this is the firing pin uh, set up. This is a very difficult piece to install. It's not hard to uninstall it because all you have to do is just push down with some tension, relieve tension on the cups. You can see there it's hard to do, but I will try to do my best to capture this on camera. If I have to get my vise, I won't have any place to do it on camera, but I can show you how to take it apart at least. Okay, so this cup came off. This cup came off. It has a ton of tension here, if you can imagine. There we go. Spring is off. So now I have to put the new spring on here. So old spring goes with the stock parts. New spring goes on. Now which, what's best is because this, this firing pin moves down, what I like to do is put the firing pin, this ledge, on the end of a table or something like that. Um, if I could find a vice that works, I will. Um, so I'm going to have to step away for a second to get this on the end of my table so you can, so I can uh, get it put together. But basically you keep this in place. You use your other hand, you use your hand to push this down past that point, And then you get these plastic cups right here inside of the spring like that and the ledge underneath the ledge for the firing pin. But you can't do it like that. You have to push the spring down first. So let me go to my bench with the uh, vise and go handle that real quick. All right, so we're back. Um, it actually wasn't too difficult. I just, again, like I mentioned, put this end piece at the end of my workbench and then push down on the spring and then put the cups inside the spring, but underneath the ledge here for the firing pin. So now we're gonna just put it all back together then we'll put the frame back together and then put the gun back together. So uh, we're gonna put our firing pin uh, channel liner back in. So that's pretty simple. Um, you can do this freely or you can use a channel liner tool, whatever you choose. I'm um, gonna do it freely, just my preference. So we're gonna go ahead and go like this and line it up. And then as I put the firing pin in side that liner it'll go down in place like so then we're going to have put this uh spring and rod in the rear here rod in in first okay then i've got this back plate to secure everything so line up the back plate take a little punch here scoot that down take another 
Let's get that guy down, and then it gets cut, caught at the end here a little bit, so I'm just gonna squeeze it through, and everything is secure. So then we just put our barrel back in. So barrel goes in, I will clean it eventually. Your guide rod and spring, and your frame, I'm sorry, your slide, I keep saying that wrong, your slide has been upgraded. You got your firing pin spring and your plunger spring installed, okay? Now let's put the frame back and we'll put it back together. All right, frame reassembly time. So this is all put together. So just drop it in place like so. The rear goes here in this area in the back. Before you do that, make sure everything's where it needs to be. Rear goes in like that. Trigger goes in there. I like to put the pin in the back in first, just as a precaution so nothing moves around. So I'm not gonna move all the stuff that we took out earlier. Okay. And I'm gonna put the rear pin in. So I use this tape because I don't have one of those pin blocks. I should probably get one. Probably look on brown to get one. Okay, so now this isn't moving out on me. Great. Uh, next, you'll want to get your slide release in place. So I just put it there. Actually, you want to put your block in first. So your locking block goes in next. And the pin for it goes in. So next, you're going to put your slide release in. So you're going to put it underneath that rod and next to the trigger. And this is where it gets tricky to line up the last pin. It's always that way because you have to line up your trigger and these holes here with the trigger and with that slide release. So if you're having trouble getting this to line up, wiggle your slide release and try to find it. So if you can try to find the hole through there, right, if you can see that. So I'm going to do that now. All right, so uh, we got it back together. This pin is a little bit harder than expected, but we got it all done. Slide, frame, ready to put it together. So you're gonna just put it together nice and easy, like so. Get some good slide action. First trigger pull, hardly any effort now. That is much easier. Let's do a reset, nice reset, and the return is not difficult. So excited to use this, I'm banging into the camera. So, that is the Terran Tactical Innovations Grandmaster Kit. Uh, there's different options that they have available on their site. Uh, they claim this is going to be between a three and a five pound pull i'll tell you right now whatever this number pulls at is definitely lighter than factory um, i do have a ranger proof trigger in here that's just my preference for a flat trigger uh, if you're interested in ranger proof triggers uh, definitely check them out there is a link in the the uh, video description below and we have a code sd20 saves you 20 percent on your purchase the great thing about ranger proof triggers is that they are fully customizable so you could get any color shoe any color safety and if they have any little accents you can get those custom colored as well but uh, there you have it without any gunsmithing you can make your trigger pull and your reset a little bit easier on you and it'll probably make shooting the gun a little more enjoyable again i am josh jwev representing squad drills life is tent thank you for joining me if you like this video please hit like you want to see more videos like this please subscribe i'm going to be posting more videos on a weekly basis and as always get your dry fire in progress not perfection life is tight.